gotta do this Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion part three recap. So, y'all know we had part one and part two already. Y'all know I didn't do the recap for part two. Why? One, because I had a lot of stuff going on with the family and stuff. Had a couple of, you know, family issues I had to deal with. Two, because I didn't want to talk about Mama Joyce. No more. I'm over the Mama Joyce situation, okay? And that bitch was on 50, okay? Not 10, not 15, not 20. She was on 50. Fit it, okay? I didn't want to hear about the shit no more. And her motherfucking head got so damn big because of this damn show that her motherfucking ass is talking about she deserves a peach. I'm like, give this motherfucker a motherfucking prune to keep her motherfucking ass regular and tell her to shut the fuck up, okay? So that's another reason why I didn't want to do the recap for Reunion Part 2 because honestly on some real shit, that's all we would have talked about. We gonna go into Part 3, which just so you guys know, if you guys haven't seen it already, is three damn hundred hours long okay it's really two hours long but i didn't expect it to be so damn long that being said we gonna go into the parts that i felt was interesting to talk about because on some real shit not everything in the damn show was worth even trying to recap because half the shit we done already recapped in other previous episodes and to be real nini's mo motherfucking ass was on some other levels okay nini was also on 60 she might have been a little bit past mama joyce okay she almost came across like the villain and really she didn't even really have to come across that way i know she had to get in kenya's ass because kenya was trying to check her ass and shit but to be completely real she came across in some instances like i don't really like the bitch okay and i already was starting to lose a little bit of respect for her towards a lot of part of the, the season okay but this reunion particular part three had me kind of fucked up about Nene, but we gonna go ahead and get into it. So we gonna just go into the shit that I felt was very interesting to discuss. Like I said, here we go. First up, before we go into the real interesting parts, because on some real shit, I really didn't give a fuck about whatever the fuck went on in this particular part three at a reunion or whatever until the men came on stage for real, for real, because everything that I talked about is shit we done talked about in previous recaps. If you have not seen my previous recaps, of course, they're on a playlist on my channel, okay? But I did want to go into the fact that Nene was on one, okay? That bitch was on 70, all right, today. And her ass almost came across really for real like the motherfucking villain and Kenya if it wasn't for the, the fact that her ass was so motherfucking cray cray and her ass is such a conniving bitch to begin with you know a lot of the shit that Kenya said was pretty valid in my personal opinion at least up until this point up until Apollo came on stage okay so a lot of what Kenya was trying to call you know uh Nene on was true her not wanting anybody else to be the star of the show. Her being worried about Kenya being the star of the show. That shit I truly, truly believe. I mean, I know Kenya says a lot of shit, but that's actually something that I truly believe because I said that last season, y'all saw the position of Nene and Kenya. They were both, you know, on opposite sides of Andy and that happened yet again. They are the drama for the most part on the show. Let's take out Mama Joyce because we don't give a fuck about her. Okay. So outside of that, if it wasn't for Kenya, there would really be no for real, for real drama on the show. People really wouldn't watch this particular season. I'm just saying there's only so much of Mama Joyce and Kenya. We were going to take. Okay. So I'm not going to lie. When Kenya was trying to get in that ass, she made some valid points. But because Kenya don't really have no valid point to stand on, ain't nobody trying to fuck with a bitch. But Nene, okay, started to kind of defend the fact after Andy had pretty much said that she had put something on her blog talking about the fact that uh, she didn't want to stoop as low as Candy's mom, Mama Joyce you know, trying to, you know, stoop as low as she did, trying to pull hair or whatever the fuck she don't reference or whatever in her blog. Now, you know, as much as Candy and Mama Joyce don't really get along with the whole Todd situation, you already know Candy's gonna have Mama Joyce's back, okay? So, naturally, as Nene's trying to be like, you know, I stand behind what the fuck I said. I had said that's what the fuck I wanted to say, and I stand behind what the fuck I said. Here go Candy's ass talk about some you done never address my mom in your blog. And y'all know her motherfucking ass truly wanted to cry because every time she talks about her mama, she be like, I mean, you can say whatever you want to me, but you can't say whatever you want about my mom. Y'all ass is 
no, she don't enunciate shit, okay? But no, it's some real shit. I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. What Candy said was right. Nene don't like when shit's done to her that she does to other motherfuckers. She constantly disrespects people, says things at the side of her mouth, says whatever the fuck she wants to say. And if someone was to do the same thing to her, she would have a motherfucking problem with it. Now, I don't necessarily agree with all of what Candy said in the sense of the context by which Nene done wrote the shit in her blog. I got what she was trying to say, okay? She was trying to make a reference to what the fuck Candy said, which was that, you know, I, I ain't never seen her, you know, walk away from a fight. So, you know, she, of course, was trying to kind of lowball her or whatever, okay? Now, my thing is, she wouldn't really necessarily have a place to disrespect Mama Joyce, or at least Candy's mom in that instance, if Mama Joyce hadn't really shown her motherfucking ass. But because Mama Joyce decided to be one of the real housewives of Atlanta cast with all her buffoonery on this season, okay... Nene kind of had a right to kind of bring her up. I mean, I'm just being real. She showed her ass. Nene just made mention of the obvious, of which we all saw, okay? So I can't blame Nene for making reference to it. I don't believe in her disrespecting people's mamas and shit, but on some real shit, Mama Joyce done disrespected her motherfucking self and Candy. Shit, she's making, you know what I'm saying? She made a total ass of herself on this entire season, and I'm wondering what the fuck she's gonna do when they show the special on her wedding or whatever the fuck. Now, we can move on to when it really truly got interesting, which is when the men came on stage. Because on some real shit, there was really nothing else before this that really tickled my motherfucking fancy, okay, that we hadn't already talked about before. So, now, we got Apollo, okay? Apollo shows up on set, everyone else on set, and uh, he's all next to, to Phaedra, okay? Now, you know I've been waiting for him to come up on stage so that I can see if he's gonna address the whole clink clink situation he finna get his motherfucking ass involved in okay now recently his accomplice just i guess pleaded out or whatever the fuck or she was sentenced to five years in jail okay and this is literally over the last week or two so recently she done got sentenced now that was like his accomplice or whatever so i highly doubt she gonna go for five years and not throw his ass in there too you hear me okay so anyway andy decides to start bringing up the fact that they motherfucking asses are in counseling okay her uh phaedra and uh apollo are in counseling and i ain't gonna lie to y'all when he was sitting there with his arm around her i just felt like he was just fronting like a motherfucker and phaedra was too as much as andy was sitting there saying oh yeah there's rumors going around that y'all actually, you know, were separated or whatever. Phaedra's like, we never separated. I believe that they didn't get separated. Bitch, look, uh, you ain't gonna go nowhere. I'm gonna tell you why. Because you were his motherfucking lawyer. You can't go nowhere. Right now, you involved in the shit, whether you his lawyer or not, which I don't think she is. He's got his own, you know, litigator or whatever. But the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, you got to ride this motherfucker out. This is not the time to be trying to get divorces and shit and, and calling any more attention to your motherfucking self. You know what I'm saying? He got to figure his shit out. That being said, Andy talks about the rumors. They say, no, there's never been a time where they've been separated. They looked all uncomfortable because, you know, of course... Apollo's got his arm around Phaedra all hard and shit, you know, with the strong arm and shit. And, uh, of course, Andy goes on and asks, you know, how counseling has been for them. And as they're sitting there and his arms around Phaedra's neck and shit, like, bitch, tell them this fucking shit is the shit that we get through the counseling and shit. She's like, yeah, you know, it's, it's cool. You know, real short, you know, real uncomfortable like, okay. And here goes Apollo's ass trying to explain what the fuck marriage is okay and this nigga was like you know marriage it takes a toll <laughs> nigga what the fuck does marriage take a toll on i mean for real like when he starts saying dumbass shit like i don't know if y'all caught when they showed a recap of some shit he done said earlier talking about hopefully you don't get clogged down with some shit the fuck what the fuck does clogged down clogged up are you trying to say clogged up nigga like clogged up or clogged down nigga like i he don't know this nigga don't look what have i been saying all season look i said this little pretty ass nigga needs to just stay what i say say women now stay pretty he don't need to be trying to sound educated that nigga don't need to have no kind of philosophical nothing okay because the shit sounds fucked up he can't get
shit not damn thing right, okay? So now this nigga gonna talk about some marriages take a toll. Nigga, what the fuck does the marriage take a toll on? Does the marriage take a toll on the marriage? What the fuck were you really trying to say? You know whatever the fuck he was trying to say was all just just scrambled all up in his motherfucking head. Anyway, then Andy's gonna ask him, right, have you gotten the whole phager back since she's finished with school, okay? And this dumbass nigga gonna be like, three nights ago. Did this dumbass nigga put all damn ten of his fingers up, okay? Y'all notice that shit? Like, I exaggerated like a motherfucker, but on some real shit, when you go back through your DVR, take a look and see how many motherfucking fingers this nigga put up to say three, okay? That's three, nigga. This is not three. The nigga had damn near four fingers up or three and a half or whatever the fuck, nigga. Put three fingers up if you're gonna say three, nigga, okay? The motherfucker was like, yeah, three. That motherfucker was acting like that motherfucker on Martin and shit. What was this motherfucking name? Bruh man, fifth flow. Like, for real though, nigga? Okay, whatever. Moving on. So Andy's gonna go ahead and ask a little bit further about this whole legal situation that he's involved in, okay? And this motherfucker gonna be like, you know what? We just gonna let this motherfucker play out. However, yeah, can you? Just so you know, you better pray no shit happens to me, okay? And then this nigga gonna say, because I'm your whole storyline, and without me, you ain't shit on the motherfucking show. Damn near. That's pretty much what the fuck he said. Talking about she on other shows, talking about him, and talking about Apollo this and Apollo that. You better hope nothing happens to me. But either way, you owe me money, bitch. And if I do go to jail, your ass needs to go ahead and send money to my motherfucking book. I'm gonna give you my P.O. box. I was like, see, I'm gonna need you. You know what? I, I don't need you to do nothing. You know what? Keep going with the fuck you said, because you Yo ass know you going to jail, so fuck it. At least he kept that shit real. Okay, y'all know when Phaedra went in on Kenya on this part right here, like, I straight up was like, like, just drop the mic and end the show. Fuck it. Reunion over. Done. Not one person said one thing, and y'all know what the fuck part I'm talking about. It was when Andy brought up some shit about whatever, the whole Apollo, Phaedra, Kenya situation. And next thing you know, Phaedra gonna make sure to go ahead and get in on Kenya and let her know that, you know, while you out here talking shit on my husband and the father of my children, you out here trying to peddle through catalogs of sperm at the sperm bank, and you'll never know your motherfucking ass baby father if they're an axe murderer, a serial killer, or whatever the fuck, a child molester, because that motherfucker done uh, wanted a $10 medium pizza and ejaculated in a cup so you could have a kid. I was like... Oh shit, nigga! I was like, this bitch done went the fuck in, and guess what? Y'all know Kenya has something to say about every motherfucking thing. Her ass didn't say a motherfucking thing, and nobody else did either. In fact, I think they showed Nini's face, who was like, mm, and that was it, okay? Now, I don't agree with what the fuck Phaedra said. It is very insensitive because there are people that do have to truly go that route to have a child. That is what they're there for, okay? Sperm banks or whatever the fuck. I'm not gonna sit here and say that I agree with exactly what the fuck she said, but the fact that she got in Kenya's ass, I just enjoyed that little moment. Now, I, like I said, I don't agree with what the fuck she said, but I don't think she truly meant to offend anyone who has to go through that method of having a child. It was just to get in Kenya's ass. Because, you know, Kenya be all up on shit and talking all kinds of shit. And she got her on that shit. Like, I was like, for real, drop the mic, shit's done, turn the lights off, bitch. This whole reunion show is over. So then Andy's going to ask some other question. I don't know what the fuck he asked, right? Kenya's going to be like, you know what? <laughs> I'm done rolling around in the mud with pigs, okay? Now, this is after Phaedra and I got in that ass, right? So, of course, she couldn't say shit. There was really no comeback. Obviously, she was offended or whatever the fuck, okay? And he gonna be like, so you're not gonna be on the show no more. And then, uh, Apollo gonna be like, Yeah, uh, you might wanna clean your toes, because, you know, <laughs> they dirty. Look, when he said that shit, I was like, okay, see, once again, this nigga don't know what the fuck he says half the time, but on some real shit, 
This is the one time I probably would have to say, even though I didn't see her motherfucking toes, y'all know she got some busted ass feet and some busted ass fingers, pretty much like my shits, except I have some length on my on my fingers, okay? The bitch got nubs for fingers or whatever, and she got some fingers for toes. So the fact that he was like, uh, bitch, yo shit's dirty, I was like, oh shit. So the rest of the husbands are in the room and they go go to Peter, okay? The, the, the you know, eighth housewife of Real Housewives of Atlanta, okay? And they go ahead and start talking about the fact that, you know, the whole situation where Nene called him a bitch-ass nigga or whatever the fuck she don't call him and how, you know, his ass always has an opinion, tries to seem to get into the women's business or whatever the fuck or whatever. And he's going to be like, you know what? I'm always going to have a motherfucking opinion. Shit, bitch. Okay. And if you want to call me the next real housewife of Atlanta housewife, bitch, here's my motherfucking peach. And that nigga pull out a peach and ate that shit. Okay. And I thought that was funny as fuck because on some real shit, you know what? At the end of the day, even though I don't agree with everything that Peter does, you know, he gonna come across like he's full of shit, okay? Like, he just keeps it real. He don't like some shit, he gonna let you I let you know. I don't like the shit. I mean, it is what it is, you know what I mean? Uh, he don't apologize for shit, which is exactly what the fuck he said, right? Then this nigga gonna be like, no, I got 20 baby mamas. And fit the kids, and I ain't never called no woman no bitch. Okay, alrighty then, motherfucker, you were busy. I mean, when the fuck did you have all them motherfucking baby mamas? So, that kind of threw me off. I mean, I'm glad you ain't calling all 50 of them motherfuckers no bitches. But, nigga, did you just say you had 20 baby mamas and 50 kids? I don't know what the... Okay, we gon' We just... We gonna let that ride. I just... We gonna let that ride. So Kenya's talking about the whole, you know, nighty night situation that uh, Nene done put together, okay? Where the whole brand and Apollo fight done happened and all the other bullshit went down, right? So Kenya's gonna talk about the fact that before she got there, because she was late as fuck, okay? Before she walked in that motherfucker and they were miking her up, that, uh, that Nene was acting a plum fool, talking about why the fuck is this bitch late? They trying to make her the star of the show. I'm the only motherfucking star of the show, et cetera, et cetera. Now... I know Kenya's full of shit, right? Normally? Okay. For some unknown reason, when she was saying this, I actually believed her. I truly believed that Nene, throughout that course, the course of that portion, specifically that portion of the show, I really, especially during that time of the season, I believe that Nene felt as if Kenya was starting to kind of take and take the reins at, you know, on the show in general. Okay, I do believe that you know they were trying to pit Kenya as a uh, as one of the main characters and as a a villain on the show. I'm not gonna lie. So when she said that. Even though Kenya's full of shit, I actually believe that Nene was threatened by Kenya's presence and the fact that Nene was, or that Kenya was late as fuck and kind of just the position she was kind of turning into. So, Nene, of course, you know, is like, oh, I didn't say that shit. Uh, you don't know what the fuck you talking about. I don't recall that shit. She asking everybody in the room, oh, did you hear that shit? And everybody's all mums the word and shit. And then later on, when they're having conversations about some other shit, it turns out that in that conversation, okay, there was some footage shown. I think it was the unseen footage that they showed later on about the fact that Nene done made a comment about, you know, the star of the show ain't here. I mean, and really the star of the show for real is here, but why, you know, but also, okay, I'm the only motherfucking star. Whatever the fuck she said, it was obvious that she did make reference to that fact. So that's what I'm saying. Like when Kenya first brought that shit up, I truly believe the shit. And then when I heard that little tiny bit of footage of the unseen footage that they showed later on in the show, that kind of proved it a little bit to me. Let me know what y'all think about that down below, but I believe Kenya's ass on that shit. Andy brings up the fact that during the course of that night, Nene really offended a lot of people. Someone had sent in some kind of comment, and there was a lot of people that really were upset about the way Nene responded to Brandon and, you know, calling him a queen, and it was in a derogatory way. And even Andy on the show even mentioned the fact that he felt offended by that too. Now, he said that before in another season something or other recap or something. I, I saw him talk about it someplace else. And there was a lot of backlash to Nene about that. I personally didn't like that at all either, personally, to be completely real. And, you know, I mean, I know Andy was offended. Now, I don't know about y'all. Nene, like I said, was on one this entire reunion special, okay? And she, like I said, she's been just a bitch. And especially during the reunion, I felt like the way she handled the response to that, even when Andy was like, yeah, I actually took offense to that. It did bother me. Even Kenya was like, oh, did you do, you know, did you take offense? And he was like, yeah, no, no, I really did take offense. And Nene's like, what, you, what the fuck you want me to do? You want me to pull your pants down and kiss your ass? I'm like, bitch, 
apologize for that shit. This is the nigga that pays you. Yeah, you may act a motherfucking buffoon on camera to get them bills paid. But the reality is Andy made you, ass, yeah, made your ass. Let's just be real. Andy has this show going. Andy's part of the reason why your motherfucking ass is the highest paid on the show. And the reality is, kiss ass, whatever the fuck, the way you responded was insensitive as fuck. So she's like, what do you want me to do? I mean, what does everyone want me to do since I don't apologize for shit? What y'all want me to do? You want me to have a gay pride march, a gay pride, such and such? You want me to have a gay event? Nigga, what? What? Like, if anything made it any worse, I felt her response made it worse. You know what I'm saying? And I, I mean, I literally, that, I, and I really already thought... Not too highly of Nini, especially this season. But that response, specifically to that thing, just ticked me the fuck off. I was not a fan at all. And I feel like she disrespected Andy, too. Like, I know Andy tried to take it and whatever. And in his mind, he probably like, bitch, I pay you. But the reality is, uh, you know, you represent... Uh, you know, a, a a group of people that were very offended by what the fuck she said. And I felt like he kind of let that go because it was Nene and I think that's bullshit. Even though he may know her personally and feel like, okay, I know she doesn't really truly mean that. But on the show, I felt like, okay, you should have been like, look, here's the deal. You were offended. You know, you were offensive. I was offended. And, you know, no, what the fuck you're saying is offensive. You know, you've gotten another motherfucker's asses before. You just let Nene say what the fuck she wants to say. Anyway, I didn't like the way she responded to that. Let me know what you think down below. But I personally, I just thought she was such an asshole for that shit. I ain't gonna lie about that shit. So it's the end of the show, right? And Andy is now kind of going through with the women because now the men are off stage. And uh, basically trying to recap and be like, you know, the season was cool. And we had a couple of snafus, but all in all, it was cool. So what'd you think? He's going to each and every single woman, asking them what they think. And he got to Cynthia, and Cynthia was like, you know, all in all, it was a good season. It was wonderful. You know, we had a couple of hiccups, you know, you know, meaning the two fights, you know, along the way. And, you know, those weren't exactly the greatest moments ever. And I just feel as though those were not a representation of us. And that's not why people watch us. I'm like, look, I was like, uh, bitch. That's part of the reason why this motherfucking show got the ratings it got. Where those fights? Let's be real. The arguments, the cattiness, the ratchetness. Ain't nobody watching your motherfucking asses because y'all, you know, we trying to look up to your motherfucking asses. I'm sorry. I know there's women out there that are like, oh, I want to be Nene when I grow up. But let's be real. The reason why most of the entire nation watches this show is not to get inspiration to become, you know, the next Nene Leaks. It's because there is some ratchet behavior on the show and unfortunately with a lot of shows that are black specifically on our cable networks that's what people want to see that's the reality of it all that's how it goes that's what brings the ratings in they like to see ratchet behavior that being said that was the end of the reunion okay i thought it was a full two hours until i realized they're gonna talk to whiny whiny porsche's ass for another half an hour towards the end of it and honestly y'all I didn't watch the shit, to be real. I didn't want to hear 30 minutes of Portia talking. I just didn't. With her little swinging, I didn't want to hear that shit. So, I just didn't watch the shit. So, if y'all saw it, let me know what she said down below that was, you know, relevant or whatever. If there was anything relevant. But it didn't interest me at all. I'm just happy this motherfucking reality season of Real Housewives of Atlanta is over. To be completely real. When I look back at the old shit that they showed, when they were showing back... The old stuff at the beginning of the season, I was like, damn, this shit's been on for damn near a year, it feels like. I didn't remember half the shit that was shown from earlier on in the season because it'd been that long. The show's been on that long. Y'all know, now that this show is over, we gotta recap another motherfucking season of buffoonery on some other network, and that's gonna be Love & Hip Hop. So, Love & Hip Hop came on specifically this evening. Okay, the new episode came on. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet because I had to do my reunion recap. I am losing my voice, hence why you probably hear it a little scraggly and scratchy or whatever. So I'm hoping I don't lose it before I do my Love & Hip Hop recap. I will be doing love and hip-hop atlanta recaps here on this channel comment down below let me know if there's anything in particular you guys want me to recap besides love and hip-hop atlanta i know there's married to medicine i haven't started watching it or anything but i know there's a lot of other shows coming up so definitely leave those comments down below let me know what you guys thought of the reunion i know there's parts that i probably missed but honestly that was the longest fucking two three fucking six part reunion in life and it just not everything was worth even mentioning so comment down below let me know what you guys enjoyed of the reunion and uh anyway y'all know what to do as always thumbs up these videos if you love seeing these videos from your girl make sure you follow me on twitter twitter.com for a slide i can't talk 
twitter.com forward slash socialite sandy hit me up on my facebook fan page and my pinterest page those links are down below hit me up on my blog the socialite life.blogspot.com and hit me up on instagram as socialite sandy and y'all already know i love y'all and i will see y'all in the next video love y'all bye we back up in this motherfucker to do the long-awaited question answer video that y'all been waiting for a few of you guys actually